What? Ah, <laughs> uh, I know. Thinking secret. out loud. <laughs> Cat, what am I thinking about? I don't know. <laughs> uh, unicorns. Unicorns. <laughs> Anong iniisip ko? Being able to read other people's minds would be pretty cool, but also pretty creepy. However, you could try to understand them. No crystal balls or any sort of hocus pocus required. All it takes is just a bit of psychology study or a lot for that matter. We can only understand so much of the psyche or totality of the mind just as how we are in a constant state of change, predictable yet uncertain. Our conscious and unconscious mind, ways and behavior undergo different stages, phases that affect the entirety of an individual, aiming to describe, explain, predict and control the behavior and mental processes of men are the four main goals of psychology. This certain interest in the human mind dates back to the time of ancient Greek philosophers. Prominent people in the field include Aristotle, who used the term psych to refer to the essence of life. He also claimed that the mind is a tabula rasa, or blank state from birth. Saint Augustine of Hippo, Francis Bacon, Charles Darwin, René Descartes, Franz Gall, Weber, Fichtner, von Helmholtz, who conducted the first psychological experiment together with the father of modern psychology, Wilhelm Wundt. The enduring interest in psychology also paved the way to developing the great classical theories of the field, otherwise known as the schools of thought. Some of the most influential schools are... Wundt was later known as structuralism. In this setting, Wundt and his colleagues studied perception. Some experiments simply involved recording a large-scale perspective. It examines the necessary structures that make up a society and how each part helps to keep the society stable. No free will. Our surroundings and environment determine our behavior. When we are born, our mind is a... We perceive certain patterns and why we don't perceive other certain patterns. Okay, so that might sound complicated, but basically it just focuses on how our brain likes to group things together or separate them. So our personalities have memories, beliefs, urges, drives, and instincts that we are not always aware of and that make up this unconscious. And the major driving force behind Freud's instinctual theory is the concept of libido. And you may have heard of this in a different context, but we'll go over it in terms of this theory. Founding these schools of thought guide men of the know to categorizing and establishing certain areas in psychology, which in turn help in understanding how the minds of humans work. When you're feeling down and need a little picker up, listen to music and it'll seem to brighten up your mood. When you're right next to your crush and you start acting weird, and then your friends start being weird. When you're watching your favorite celebrity and you start doing what she does, when you're looking for makeup online because the advertisements say you'll have gorgeous, totally not fake looking eyelashes when you use it. When you can't even lay a finger on a dog because you're sinophobic. When your friend doesn't want to do a favor for you, so you bribe them into doing whatever favor it is. Psychology is more than just lying down on a psychiatrist's couch or lab test with rats, or some technical terms smart people use. It's about being able to understand the underlying reasons how the little gears inside our head work, for differently each of us, making us humans a bit more interesting. We get to learn to appreciate the conventional and unconventional amongst us to keep. So keep on thinking because no one else is going to do it for you, right? <laughs>